Hi, this is Catherine Dubberly, the answer lady. My Studio 150 knitting machine needed a little bit of attention, so we completely took apart the carriage and thought we'd take this opportunity to show you how one of these comes apart and back together. You might need to do this for deep cleaning, which is shown in one of our other videos, or you might need to do it to replace a part. Don't despair when you see we start with it apart, because we'll make it clear how it came apart and how to get it back together. If you need to know how to do the deep cleaning process, look in the My Machine Was Working When I Put It Away videos. That shows more details about the oil bath and cleaning the crud out and looking for other problems. This is a Studio 150. There's also Singer 150s and they're pretty much the identical model. And we have had it apart for deep cleaning and Jack is putting it back together now. It's actually really easy to clean because it's so simple. This machine has no punch card mechanism so there are fewer variables in the levers and the flappers underneath the machine and it's easier to get it clean. And when it works great, it is a real workhorse. I really enjoy it. And it will work good. And of course, there were numerous and sundry dust rhinos in it when we took it apart. But now it does look nice. Here, let's mm -hmm. let everybody see that. All right, this one <clears throat> had some peculiarities about it that we discovered. The ears on this inner dial mean that when you drop it into place it's going to be under the cover and the problem is going to be that this part's not going to want to slip under the cover so what we did was actually lead this up and slip the cover over the top of it with a little bit of room to spare basically this is like easier so. to get apart and together than most machines but we thought you would like to see the oddities that will throw you for a loop if you don't know and of course the magnets will get all of your hardware but again this one let me see if I can take it back off and show everybody we took one apart a while back and I talked about the the little fingers here that actually fit into these positional grooves on this so that when you try to put this on you see those fingers are in the way and what you have to do is use my favorite tool in the whole world your little dental tool to try to pull these fingers out enough to start the machine on you see that that one was easier than the brother that you did yeah now we now got, it's the tricky part yeah and you see it went on easily before I oh I'm afraid I have a fingerprint on the back I will wipe it off okay good did the fingers stay where they belong? They did. It's just that I think the bottom one is a little out of alignment so that it's not going all the way down. But you're able to reach it from inside the circle? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Now, let me see if I can get the camera to look right down in there. And this is what I'm talking about. The black metal part is just above the circle of that white dial. Did that show it all? I think it did. Okay. Let's do it one more time. And I think with the pin I'm pointing to the right spot, am I? Right there. Yes. That is the metal finger that's spring-loaded against this part of the dial. Okay, so that's the hard part of reassembly it right is. there. And one of our friends wrote to say she had a dickens of a time getting the dial back together, but she did, so I'm not the only one that can do this. I started to write her back and say, Welcome to the world of machine repair. Well, it is a very specific skill, but a normal person can do it with patience and determination. Yes, we actually have a number of knitters out there that are just as facile as anyone with the equipment. I think it's just being familiar with them or familiar with enough different pieces of equipment to uh, to make it look easy like we do. <laughs> you. 
Not me, you. You're the editor. You take out all the times I drop things and fumble around and say, Gosh, where does that go? Yeah, I do. Uh-huh. But right. count, look at how few screws it is to get this back together. Yes. And here's our favorite part in the whole world. Let's Which position works best for putting the handle back on? On one of the machines you said to flex it, and on the other you said to do it straight. This one, okay, here's how you can tell. This one has a foot. And look at the mark on that foot right there. And what that's showing you is it rubs against that part of the machine right there. Mm -hmm. And that's how you tell. So you want to put it in the relaxed position. And uh, we talked about this when we took it apart. The fact that these little things, for some reason, work themselves in so tightly. The screws that hold the handle? Yeah, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get them both started and then we'll let you hold the camera so we can show people how we try to do to get these back out once they've been in for a while. This is the easy part. Everything's oily and greasy and slides real good. Alright, now, with the camera where it's at, what we're going to do is we're going to stand this up. Now, on this end, We've got two fairly level spots to try to... But you can't press hard on this because it'll That's break. That's right. That's what I was going to say. So I'm making an exaggerated angle now that you'd want to hold it at. Now, if you can pick the camera up and see that I'm going in the top of that handle and I'm tightening that up. Now, to get it out, you really got to press down. So it's important that you keep the weight of the machine balanced on that hard metal piece to do that. And that would be the same thing on this side. And we're going to put this back in, but to get it out, you get your screwdriver started in there. And remember, we repaired one of these screws because it just wore the cross right off of the screw. But there you go, and a little bit of pressure down tightens it up, and a whole lot of pressure down takes it off. And here we are. Alright, we're putting the dial back on, and there's two characteristics you need to look for. This slot, called a keyway, and this position of the cam path right here. Now what we're going to match is, this is the key on the post. Can you see that? Yes. There's the key on the post that matches the keyway, but look right in here with the assistance of our camera person, and that post actually rides in that cam path on here. Now what you do is, it's easy to match the keyway to the key. That's simple. So you just turn it on there and it drops down. But now, in order to get it all the way down, it has to match that post position. What you do is you turn it over. And this is what's moving to move that post position. So you keep your hand on that and move it just a little bit till your dial drops all the way down. And if it doesn't go completely around... Which see, it's not right now. Right. Okay, then we go back to the entry position and then we've got to keep working this. See the distance between the dial mm -hmm. and the base and that's what we're going to do. I've got my thumb putting a little pressure on the dial there we go. It popped right in. Right into position. Now here we go all the way around to R. And to get it off is a piece of cake. You rotate it all the way past 10 and it just lifts up. Yes, and I'll show them by lifting and see it rotates just a little as you lift. But that's what you want to take a picture of right there is the relationship between that small post and the distance it is from that post. Let's see what I can get. That's the best we can do. Okay. But so we let's get it back together.
Yay. And we're ready to knit. Not quite. I will need to put the sinker plate on and screw on the screws when I locate them. It's not that hard. If you have trouble, just ask. 